What's up guys, it's Rob from TMP. In this video, we're gonna be going over how to pick a trolling motor to fit specifically to your boat and style of fishing. With all the different options out there, it's easy to get confused and buy something you don't actually need. Or buy something only to find out later that it's not going to work the way you were planning on. So I'm going to be breaking down all of the basic differences with the motors and showing you what you should be paying attention to when picking one out for your boat. I'm just going to be brushing over some of these topics, so if there's something you want to see more in depth, we'll have some links to other videos in the description below. The first thing we're going to be looking at is how the trolling motor is mounted and all of the different styles of mounts. Trolling motors can either be mounted on the transom or the bow of the boat. Transom mounted motors mount on the back of the boat and are usually found on smaller boats and kayaks. Bow mounted motors mount on the front of the boat and can be mounted on pretty much any type of boat that has a front deck. Transom mounted motors have a clamp style mount that mounts onto the transom. Most of them have a depth adjustment, a tilt adjustment, and a steering tension adjustment and can easily be installed or removed from the boat. Bow mounted motors can either have a scissor style mount that has a middle and upper arm that pivots on a base or a more compact style mount that has a steering motor that pivots on a base. The next thing to consider is how the trolling motor is controlled and how the speeds operate. Some motors are controlled by a tiller handle, others are controlled by a foot pedal. There's also some differences in the foot pedals. Some of them are cable steer and some of them are electric steer. A lot of the motors can also be controlled by a handheld remote. With hand control motors, you have both forward and reverse speeds since you can't really turn the motor 360 degrees with the tiller handle. With foot control and remote control motors, they only have forward speeds since they can easily steer 360 degrees. You also have five speed motors and variable speed motors. Five speed motors have five set speeds and are controlled by a rotary switch. Five speed motors do cost less, but you have a lot less control and they are a lot less efficient on battery life. Variable speed or digital motors have endless speed variation and are controlled by a potentiometer and a control board. These motors cost a little bit more, but you get a lot more speed control and runtime out of them. One of the most important things to consider when picking a motor for your boat is the thrust and voltage of the motor. Trolling motor power ratings are based on pounds of thrust. The thrust of a trolling motor can range anywhere from 30 pounds to well over 100 pounds. The rule of thumb for choosing the right motor is at least two pounds of thrust for every 100 pounds of fully loaded boat weight. For example, a 2,000 pound boat would need at least 40 pounds of thrust and a 4,000 pound boat would need at least 80. You also need to go up a bit on thrust if you fish a lot in wind or current or if your boat has a lot of drag or resistance in the water. Each motor also has a voltage that it's rated for. A trolling motor can range in voltage from 12 volts to 36 volts, meaning a 12 volt motor is powered by one battery, 24 volts, two batteries, and 36 volts, three batteries. Another important thing to pay attention to is shaft length. Choosing the correct shaft length to fit your boat is extremely important. With too short of a shaft, your motor will cavitate. With too long of a shaft, it can get in the way both when stowed and deployed. Although it is better to have too long of a shaft than too short of a shaft. The rule of thumb is that the lower unit should be submerged 12 inches into the water. So take that into account when measuring for your boat. We also have a more in-depth video on how to properly measure your trolling motor shaft and how to pick the right size for your boat down in the description below. Brushed versus brushless. Until the last couple of years, brushed trolling motors are all that's been available. Brushed trolling motors have an armature that spins inside of a magnet housing. The brushes send voltage through the commutator, creating an electromagnetic field and causing the armature to spin. Brush motors are noisier, less efficient, and run hotter than brushless motors. 
The advantage to them is they're a lot cheaper to manufacture, which makes them a lot more affordable. With brushless motors, they use a permanent magnet for their rotor and the stator creates the electromagnetic field. They do not use brushes, which means no friction. This helps them to run quieter, faster, cooler, and more efficient than a brush motor. The downside is they're a little bit more expensive to manufacture. There's currently only a couple of trolling motors being made with a brushless motor, but in the years coming, we expect to see a lot of models going brushless. There's also motors that are rated for saltwater use and motors that are just rated for freshwater use. Saltwater motors have a more corrosion resistant painting process and stainless steel hardware. Some of them also have a sacrificial anode to help keep the corrosion away. Some motors also give you the option of a built-in transducer that can link to your fish finder. This will put the transducer inside of the lower unit and hide the wire in the trolling motor shaft. These transducers can range from traditional sonar to down or side imaging. Some of them are universal and some of them can only work with select fish finders. So it's important to take that into account if you're wanting to run specific electronics. Some motors also have built-in GPS features. These features would give you things like spot lock, autopilot, cruise control, and more, which can help you out quite a bit on the water. With some models, you can also get additional GPS features by linking it to a specific fish finder. So it's also important to take that into account if you're wanting to run specific electronics. So those are the main things you need to consider when picking a motor for your boat. If you want to see some more in-depth videos on any of these specific categories, we'll have some links down in the description below. I hope this video helped. If it did, make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and keep trolling.